And yes, I am finally presenting to you my review of the Barbie the Bar story that was made for TV One. And I had to do that a little bit because I'm embarrassed to say that. Not that I saw it. I'm not embarrassed to say I saw it. But TV One should be ashamed of themselves for what they did to this family. Hey, it's your girl, Miss Little Cole. I'm back and I'm going to give you just one more video before I head out today. You know, usually I like to discuss the weather and say it's beautiful and stuff, but I'm going to talk about a topic that is very, very sad to talk about. And I feel, this is just me, I feel as though this story should have gotten the treatment that the Bobby Brown story gotten. This should have been a three-part movie. This should have been about the whole DeBarge family. They should not have singled out Bobby DeBarge because look what they gave us. They didn't even give us really Bobby DeBarge. They gave us a sliver of his life story and then threw in the DeBarge experience and then put in Janet with a side of Latoya even though he dated LaToya and then gave us a daddy in flashbacks with a side of the feds moving in on them when they was trafficking drugs to a Jermaine Jackson that looked like he should star in the Johnny Mathis story to, and I can't stand to say this person's name, a Barry Gordy that we know is freaking, um, what's his name? Big Boy from, um, from Outcast to, oh God, to Lloyd playing Gregory Williams. When you know you're looking at Lloyd to the brother having people thinking, because I've seen this on social media, having people thinking that he was Tank. To, oh my God. I mean, it was just to the mother who had, I didn't even think she was even the woman that played Doughboy's mother in Boys in the Hood. I mean, it was just all around bad. And, oh my God. To the Soul Train music sets looking like, Looking like a freaking 3D video game. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. It was a hot mess in terms of the footage and everything. But I will say this. Rashawn Fagan was a good actor. He's a good actor. And he was a good actor in the movie. And whatever he was given, he worked with it. And that's what a true actor does. I will give you a backstory of who Bobby DeBarge is because a lot of people don't know. And I'm going to explain to you how... The interest in the DeBarge family, including Bobby, became reignited. And I'm going to give you a backstory. In 2007, a young man named Rich Boy, who was a rap artist, releases a song called Throw Some D's. He's from Mobile, Alabama. And he went to high school with one of my cousins. They both graduated at the same time. In high school, he dropped out of Tuskegee University to focus on his rap career. His song, Throw Some D's on it, goes platinum. It becomes a huge ringtone song, which is one of the ringtone phenomenons of the mid 2000s. And he has a top 10 hit, and his song is like a top five hit on the RB charts, and it's like number two on rap. But he becomes big. That whole song throughout 07 is played constantly in rotation. But in the intro, you hear Bobby DeBar saying about, I used to think about immature things, you know, how he speaks. So people wanted to know, wait a minute, is that Bobby DeBarge on it? Or people was like, yo, who is that man on the vote, uh, on the song? Because 
it didn't sound like none of the rappers. They knew it was a sample from my like, morning back back in the day. So people started researching. And when you used to buy albums, you would see the credits. They had to credit them switch because that was Bobby DeBarge on the song and he wrote it. So he should have gotten credit, but I'm going to get to that later. When that happened, Vibe Magazine reached out to the family and the family gave an interview and we didn't know the tragedy that the DeBarge family endured as children because I was a fan for years before I even heard Throw Some Geese because I bought a Greatest Hits album of theirs because I remember just before I finished high school, I bumped that album constantly. I love that Greatest Hits album from DeBarge. And I assumed that, you know, the, the music changed. We went into New Jack Swing and they decided, except for L, you know, to just, you know, deal with work with their family and raise their children and, you know, just live a quiet, modest life. That's what I assumed. So when I'm reading the article in Vibe magazine, I'm like, oh, shit, this is some deep shit. The brother died from AIDS. That that crushed me. You know, um, all of them were had been on drugs and the father was raping Bunny. But yet still, he treated his outside kids with love and affection. The mother was being constantly abused. And it was just a, a horror film. In words. But four years later, it was even worse because Randy... And Bunny was on drugs. Now, James had always been back and forth with the drugs. But going from seeing them on Unsung, because a year later, their Unsung was released. And their Unsung was just about the DeBarge family. It wasn't focused on the group per se, but they did talk about Bobby in that Unsung as well. But not as a whole like they did a switch. Like, we didn't know that Bobby was sexually abused. We just knew about Bunny. But when we found out that Bobby was sexually tortured by the father. Oh, we just couldn't take it anymore. So, that's why we have the unsung with the DeBarge family. And the unsung was Switch. Which the fans wanted a movie. This is from what I read way before this movie was coming out. They wanted a definitive DeBarge movie. And they were talking about this back in 2016. So we believed that the DeBarge family movie was coming out around about 2018. Because I even read this. Then we hear that it's going to be about Bobby DeBarge. So we're like, okay, how is this going to work? And baby, what we saw, oh child, it was frightening. So I'm going to tell you who he is. Bobby DeBarge was a young man who was the second of 10 children of Edelyn Louise I, they, I, I, I can't remember her maiden name, but her married name is DeBarge and Robert Lewis DeBarge. The mother was from Detroit and the father was from Canada. Now, the father had served in Korean War, in the Korean War, and he moved to Detroit to get some work. He met the mom at an ice skating rink back in 19... 52 supposedly when she was 17 years old he was born in 1932 as she was born in 1935 so it was sort of like the age difference it was like a three-year age difference but not a bad age difference if you know what I mean but she was still in high school. Now, supposedly, she did graduate from high school, from what I've read. And he, what a lot of people don't know, and I read this a couple of months ago. His family in Canada, he wasn't close to them. Now, a lot of people report that the family wasn't close to him because of racism. But I read on Lipstick Alley that he was a psychopath back in Canada and that he allegedly 
tortured a little girl in his family who was white. Okay, it wasn't a black child. It was a white child, his own family. And that's what led him to move from Canada to come into the United States. So it was some problem. It was some problems, real problems then. But Edelin, Edeline married him, had children with him, the first being a daughter, Bunny, and then Bobby, just a little bit under a year. Well, technically five days. Now, Bobby was not a favorite of his, of his father. Even though he shares the same name of this white man, he ain't like him. Then he had Tommy. Then he had Randy. Then William, but the nickname was Randy. Then he had Martin. Then he had Eldra. Then he had James. Then he had Jonathan, which is Chico, and the twins. Daryl Young DeBarge and Carol Peaches DeBarge. Now, the twins didn't suffer from the abuse. And from what I saw and even read, not even Chico suffered the hands of abuse. And James was his favorite. But what I learned is that Bobby was tortured in every worst way possible, sexually. Physically, psychologically, spiritually, and sexually tortured. Not abused, tortured. Because there is a difference between abuse and a torture. And this young man became bisexual because even his brother Marty said he was turned out. He also got on drugs young. He was also forced to wear dresses. And you could also see when he was a child, a young man, a teen growing up, he even had his hair worn long, similar to like a female. And, you know, Liptic Alley, they talk a lot of stuff. And I'm not going to go into the depths of it, but what they said, to sum it all up, what people have witnessed was that when he moved to Grand Rapids, he was looked upon as an awkward young man, but he tried his best to fit in. But there was notices of him trying to do things to survive on the street, not just selling drugs, but also selling himself. And this is from the stuff that I've read. I'm praying that it's not true because that that would be hurtful. But um, when he got to Grand Rapids, that's when his life got better because he got away from that horrible city, which me personally, I can't even stand it. It's that city just creeps me out alone. And I find it interesting. That's one of the things that me and him have in common is that we hate the city of Detroit. I hate it for other reasons. Separate. Totally separate from his, but he has a right to hate it. He was tortured there, but in Grand Rapids, his soul began to heal. And one of the things that healed was that he and all his brothers informed them what happened to them when they were back home. And their and their uncle, they informed their uncle about the abuse, which the mother said she never, she said she was afraid to tell. And the uncle, who's a pastor of a church in Grand Rapids, where Marvin Sapp is now a minister, he busted the father's ass. And that's what broke them away from being abused kids. And it helped Bunny a lot. And that's where Bobby started to begin to heal because it was finally some justice done in that particular situation. Now, where I'm going to get into how things got better. They had a talent with music, a musical talent, that was bar none. I mean, it was just something that was a gift from God, in my opinion. And it wasn't like they were forced to do music because they all said that if they weren't forced to do it. It was something that they genuinely loved to do. And it wasn't something that they did to get out of the ghetto. They just did it for the love of it. So Bobby didn't finish high school. 
which I would be honest with you, I don't blame him. With everything he went through with his mind and stuff, his whole thing was, let me do something that's going to save me. And that was music. So he meets a young guy named Gregory Williams. And Gregory Williams is from Grand Rapids. And when he becomes friends with him, it's like Gregory Williams is his saving grace. They start to form a band and they start working with Barry White. Barry White comes off as a bully and he don't want to pay them their money. So then they go into a group with White Heat. White Heat releases an album, but White Heat does the album doesn't do anything. So they're back home, Grand Rapids, you know, doing what they do and trying to get that demo passed. So they're in the elevator of a building and they happen to meet Jermaine Jackson. And if you know about Jermaine Jackson, he was the only brother who stayed behind when his brothers went to color um to Epic Records, CBS Records. He stays because he's married to the boss's daughter, Hazel. So Bobby and Gregory give Jermaine Jackson the demo tape, and Jermaine is totally impressed. So Jermaine takes him under the wing. He gives the tape to Hazel. Hazel's like, I love them. So they got to give the tape to her daddy, which is Barry Gordy. This is when it gets interesting. He signs them right away. He's like, y'all talented. Y'all good. But what he don't tell them is that he ain't going to pay them money. That's what he ain't going to tell them, but... That's a sidebar. But basically, they get signed. And that's in 1977. 1978, they released their debut album, Switch. And what a lot of people don't know, their debut album goes platinum. And their song, They'll Never Be, is number nine. Then they go and have a lot of hits after hits. But what they don't tell you in the movie is that they're one of the last groups for Motown to go platinum without any problems so they made a lot of money for the group and they made a lot of money for themselves but bobby's issue was that he wasn't getting his money like he should have just like with the history of all of them but another thing too is that bobby did stop doing drugs and he dates latoya jackson but latoya and him fall out of favor because latoya takes him as a joke and that's when he decides to go, apparently from what I've read, he just is like, you know, whatever. He becomes openly bisexual. And Gregory Williams, who discusses it in The Unsung, is like, you know what? You got to tone that down. If you want to be with men, be with men. But you can't do that out in the open like that, bro. Because it can mess us up. Because I don't want people to think that we're homosexual or bisexual. But Bobby didn't care because he had been so tortured as a kid that it was out. It, it was it is what it is. It was his life. And I'm going to be honest with you. He had the right to way of the way to live his life as he wanted. If he wanted to do that, that's on him. But then again, I do agree with them. Like, you know, in that time, it wasn't OK to be like that. In a sense, but Bobby had to live his life. But then in a sense, if you're doing it and have people thinking that the whole group is LGBT, that's a problem also. So it was like a 50-50 thing with that one. Now, Bobby all of a sudden gets back on drugs, but he's not acting like how he's acting in that MTV, I mean, in that TV one movie. But it's something that happens in 81. His siblings are trying to make it. So he brings them to Motown and not only do they get signed right away, but he starts producing and writing for them, which means he pieces out with switch. The brother Tommy follows in suit too. Then the bars blows up huge. They get endorsements from McDonald's, Mountain Dew. They get movie um, soundtrack endorsements. They have number one singles, top 10 singles, top five singles, platinum, multi-platinum records and all that. But it comes crashing down. And then L goes solo. And then he goes to Warner Brother Records. And then Bobby is left behind. There's no money. So he goes back 
to his brothers and be, joins the barge. They don't show that. Now he joins the barge and he even has a guest spot with them on Punky Brewster. But around this time, he marries his wife, Terry. And he has the two boys. But he also starts getting involved in drug trafficking. And Chico comes in because he signed to the group as well. He signed to Motown solo artists. But what he also does is get Chico involved in the drug trafficking game. And they get busted. And they serve time. Chico, I believe, serves like only three years. But he serves five. Or six. I believe. No, he serves five. And I think Chico serves three or four. But anyway... What has never been clear for me, and I'm going to say this, is when he was diagnosed with HIV AIDS. Some people say he was diagnosed before prison. Some people say he find out during prison. I don't know. But all I know is it can't be around the time he conceived them children with Terry. Because otherwise Terry and the boys would have got it because at them times, nobody was undetected. But what happens is that we know that he passes away in 1995. And what I found interesting is that he passed away on Elvis Presley's birthday. I mean, um, no, sorry, Elvis Presley's day when he passed away, August 16th. Now I'm going to go into the movie. They must never... As far as TV One is concerned, they must never do another movie again. How dare you disrespect the DeBarge family? Because if it wasn't for the DeBarge family, y'all channel would have never popped the way it did because their unsung brought in so many millions of viewers that it's the reason why the other unsungs would be able to make. These people helped y'all channel blow up. And what y'all do to them? You kick them in the ass by saying, we would like to thank you for everything that you've done for us as a channel and as a station. So we're going to give you this trash ass movie as a way of saying thank you. That's what y'all did. That's what y'all did. It's like when you do, when, when somebody gives you a gift for all the hard work that you've done for them and you open the box and all you see is this little, little chain. In this big, big, big box. That's what y'all did to them. Y'all, y'all just straight up disrespected the Barge family. And I have nothing but this. I have nothing but. I lost a lot of respect for y'all TV one. First of all, the wigs was trash. But Bobby ain't never wore his hair like that. And second of all, y'all didn't explore the relationship of how Swish met. Third, the only thing that y'all got right was the father. Y'all got that right. Y'all made sure that the white man who was going to play the father was going to be a very good casting. That y'all got right. Everything else y'all got wrong. Y'all got how, to me, Tyra Farrell is a good actress, but they could have got a better Mama DeBarge. Honey, Jermaine Jackson looked like he was supposed to be in a Johnny Mathis movie made 25 years ago. Um, Big Boy. You know how they are as a family. Y'all know he was mad at that shit. Y'all know damn well he ain't look like no Barry Gordy. What the fuck was y'all doing? Excuse my language. What the hell was y'all doing with that one? Also, too, Janet looked like the girl that played Lisa Turtle in the Lifetime movie for Saved by the Bell. James was too brolic, but short when he was tall and slender. Tommy, like I said, he looked like he should have played Tank as a young adult. Lloyd was too big of a star to have that small role. And then, to make matters worse, there was no plot line. Only thing that made sense was that he was going over his book and had said, I wish I could do things over again. That's the only thing that made sense. Okay? His acting was very good, but the script he had was trash. And I'm going to go into the director now. Russ Parr is not a good director. I don't know why people keep hiring for TV One. He works for Radio One. Okay? He's, he's been with the Radio One family for years, but he's not a good director. Russ Parr. He's given a script 
But whoever wrote the script was trash. A story like this, and I'm going to say it, is Academy Award worthy. This story could win awards, whether it's on the big screen, the small screen, or even on Broadway. They, this has got a hell of a story. And it can be, and it could be studied forever. Excuse me, that was my phone. It can be interpreted forever, okay? And the fact that TV1 just trashed it on purpose, it shows me that we, as a people, we got to take ownership of our life stories. We can't trust people just because they're black. And that's what happened with this. Another thing, too, I must say, we really needed to know when he first got on drugs. And we needed to know that breaking point with Bobby the Barge. And another thing, too, his sexuality, people say it should have been explored. No. But I do think that they show Bunny being tortured, but they didn't show the little boy being tortured, which was understandable. But we needed to see what made him become the man he was. We also needed to see how he met Gregory Williams. We also needed to see how Swish was formed. We also needed to see when they purely broke away. They say that the white man who was their manager wasn't even their manager. We also needed to see James and Bobby fighting. Because it's been alleged that he was messing with Bob, was torturing James. Because James was the father's favorite. Also, did Terry and him have a good marriage? Because if you look at it, she was only really with him for a period of physically in person, only a period of five years. What's happening with the children? You know, where are they? You know, it's uh, the son is doing making um, music and so forth. But all in all, this movie was trash. Rashawn Fagan, I will give you props for working with what you have. I will give Lloyd props for working with what they have. I will give... Most of the actors, what they have. And a side note, Randy was looking like James in the movie. When in fact, I'm going to tell you where they've messed up at too. The guy that played Randy should have played James. Okay? The guy that played Randy should have been the man that was playing Tommy. That's where they messed up at that too. Because Randy was the only one of the siblings Besides Tommy, that really had like a in print, he looked black. He didn't look like he had a white parent. Whereas the rest of them, whereas L and James looked like they had a white parent. But Randy, Randy, Marty, and even Bunny, they look like more like their mama's people. But Bobby, we know he 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 was a mulatto through and through and through. But I will say this about Bobby DeBarge, but even with all the horror stories they print on this man, I have always had a respect for him as a musician. Even when I first heard him on Switch, that man was talented. And I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna end it with this: if it wasn't for Bun, if it wasn't for Bobby DeBarge and Switch. We wouldn't have the barge as a family getting signed. And if it wasn't for the barge, we wouldn't have hip hop classes, classics like we do, such as Give Me One More Chance, Foolish, um, a whole bunch of other classics. Um, I already mentioned Throw Some D's, but this family's music is the most heavily sampled music in hip hop history. Many people don't discuss it. If they would have gotten the publishing right, or if they would have went to another label, they could have probably owned or even earned money from their publishing. This family would be worth, this family should be worth nine figures. That's how much money they should have. But that's the biggest tragedy of all, is that after they got away from being tortured, they were still tortured in the music business. And... I will say 
they even got tortured with this this movie or the travesty called a movie and with that being said this is missing a little call i'm signing off i want to thank everybody for listening to this please share this video please 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 share it i want everybody to hear what i have to say on this because this meant a lot to me this means a lot to me also if you're not a subscriber subscribe hit the notification bell and comment because i would like to hear what you got to say on this topic and with that being said this is your girl my little cool i'm signing off take care and have a lovely weekend